This video is brought to you by Arma, who provides top quality supplements to athletes of all kinds. Riders like Nick Way, Chad Reed, Jeremy McGrath use them for pre, during, and post activity applications. Be sure to head to armasport.com and use the code RACERX, that's R-A-C-E-R-X, no spaces, for 20% off your first order. Hey everybody, what is going on? It's summertime in Southern California. That means new bike season. That's right, 108 degrees. But you know what? It's beautiful. Glen Helen Raceway, 2021 Husqvarna FC450. This is my buddy, Colton Eck. It's spelled A-E-C-K, but trust me, that's a whole nother thing we can get into. But we are here. We tested the 2021 FC450. We're going to talk a little bit about the changes, and then we're going to discuss how those changes are felt here at Glen Helen Raceway. So for 2021, Husqvarna basically focused their change points in the suspension. Overall, the bike is 10 millimeters shorter, lower, okay? So what they did, they changed the oil bypass, they changed the valving, they changed dampening, they changed the actual linkage. Everything is changed to lower this bike a little bit, and we're going to discuss that on the track, what we felt here in a minute. But for me, it's kind of noticeable right away, right? Yeah, uh, literally first corner I noticed like the bike feels lower to the ground. I know it's it's not much. It's 10 millimeters, like it's the size of a 10 millimeter bolt. You think you wouldn't feel it, but you definitely feel it on the track. The whole bike feels lower, feels a little bit easier to maneuver, uh, you know, side to side coming into ruts and stuff like that. So small change uh, in the actual components, but big change on the track. And you hear you hear me all the time preaching that like little changes do make a difference on the track. A lot of you guys say, oh, Kiefer, it's two millimeters, whatever. Well, it actually does make a difference on the track. I know some of you non-sensitive guys may not think so, but if you had something back-to-back, -back, you'd be able to tell. Um, another point of action Husqvarna took was ECU settings. Very important, especially with these new model four-strokes now, getting a clean running ECU setting with the ignition and the fuel mapping. I feel like they succeeded there, but that takes a lot of work. So I understand that. I do a lot of ECU testing and I know how much time and how tedious that is. Little things that they change, obviously from rolling over from the 20.5 model, the SKF seals in the link obviously helps a little bit of a freer feel. That is also a big difference for me going from the, the 20 to the 20.5 and now this 21. So that is a little bit of a better modification that I like to say, like if you guys have a 20 model and you wanna stick those SKF seals in, you can do that, there is a part number. So that is a good upgrade. Another point of action as well for the Husqvarna is the Conrod bushing, basically for reliability and a little bit of a freer feel, that's what they did. So again, not a lot of changes from the 20.5 to the 21, but if you're getting off of a 20 model and then hop it on a 21, there is significant differences here so let's talk about on the track that's what you guys are here for let's let's get rid of this all what's going on you've heard it already and if you guys want some more information before we move on to the track i'm going to do something with racer x with the wp guys to really hone in on what changed on this air fork because i feel like wp has improved the air fork a lot but we don't give it enough credit because a lot of us are spring fork type of guys but the air fork has evolved, has gotten a lot better. So look for a video up soon on Racer X about this WP fork and what they're doing to evolve it. So, all right, I'm gonna hand it to Colt. He actually bought a Husqvarna. This is why he's here. No other reason. He bought a Husqvarna. He was a Japanese type of bike rider. Is that a phrase? Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I, to be completely honest, I've been a little bit of a steel frame hater uh, for the last few years, but I've been- I, I let him ride one of my bikes, steel frame bike, another color, but this kind of jump-started it. So tell us what you like about 
One, why you switch to a steel frame and why you like it. And then two, what do you like about this bike? The biggest thing for me, it's just, it's easy to ride. It's real light feeling on the track. Um, the power is real smooth, easy to ride. It's got plenty of power where you need it, um, but it's, it's not like ripping your arms out. It doesn't make you tired. Uh, it's just easy to ride. It's light. There's not really much you need to do to it. Like if you want to race it, I mean, you could maybe put an ECU on it, a pipe, and you're pretty much good to go. So I actually work at a shop as a mechanic, and durability-wise, the steel frame bikes are really the best I've seen as far as the motor goes. So for the guys out there maybe that want to try a steel frame bike, Husqvarna, what is it like going from a Honda, because that's where he came from, and now he is riding a Husqvarna. What's the biggest difference that you feel coming from an aluminum frame to now a steel frame? The steel frame, I just feel a little bit slightly more connected to the ground uh, on an aluminum frame bike, especially the one I came off. I came off a Honda. Uh, rigid! <laughs> it's very rigid. So feeling like I'm touching the ground with both wheels all the time, uh, it just in inspires confidence. It go goes back to being easy to ride. Uh, so once again, it's easy to ride. I have a lot of fun. I've, you know... It, it, what What... Don't interrupt, but like for me, he's talking about contact patch. Contact patch is how much of that rubber is actually into the ground, what you're feeling on the track, that lean angle. There's a lot of that on this Husqvarna compared to a Honda where you feel like you're on top of the dirt a little bit more, right? And you're a little bit looser. This thing feels a little bit more solid and planted. Um, now, moving on to this 21, for me, Biggest difference for me from the 20, I like to relate that because this is what we're here for, right? I feel like just with the ECU settings alone makes a quite a bit of difference for me on connectivity. Connectivity to me is this throttle to the rear wheel, how much connection I have to my right wrist. There's a lot more of that in map one and in map two, and we'll discuss the maps in a minute, but I have a lot more feel on acceleration. I like that. So would you concur? Yeah, I would. You know, one of my biggest gripes on the steel frame bikes uh, in the last few years has been they're just a little sluggish off the bottom. Uh, 21 Husqvarna, uh, I, I wouldn't complain about that anymore. It feels great. Uh, there's really not much I would do to this engine. Now, you tried map one and map two. I'm going to drop the bomb on you. Did you feel the difference between the two maps? I did. Uh, map one's a little more sluggish off the bottom compared to map two. You get a little more excitement and throttle response in map two. Uh, map one, it seems like it pulls just a little longer on top, but I chose map two. I'm kind of a lugger. I like to, you know, actually Kiefer's done this to me. I like to take their gear in a lot of the corners now. Yeah. He's, he's big on preaching that. Yeah. Um, so map two, I feel like I could pull third gear in more corners and it was just easier to ride for me. So same with me. I'm more of a map one guy. I like to, I like that length that I'm getting from map one, but what I really want to drive home to you guys map one and map two there is a distinct difference between the two if you want a little bit more rpm response excitement map two is your map map one is like an all-around map today glen helen it's soft in the morning turns hard typical southern california i still feel like that's my go-to from the a.m to the p.m so kudos to the husqvarna guys for getting this ecu dialed in because i couldn't say that a couple years ago a couple years ago the ecu wasn't that good little dirty feeling down low it wasn't connected so Kudos to the guys there for 21 for handling this. Um, just to real wrap this engine character up, just like Colt said, it's a smooth character. It builds RPMs really calculated. It's not like a Honda or a Yamaha. It's real snappy and out of the corners and it pops you out. This engine rewards riders that are aggressive. It likes to be revved, similar to a 250. And I can't ride this bike like I ride a Yamaha. To me, I got to ride it more aggressive, let it eat, let it rev out, and then it rewards me. So same for you, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the harder you ride this thing, the better it seems to work. Um, and the engine allows for that. You know, it's not something that you're going to do three, four laps and be super tired because it's ripping your arms coming out at every turn. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm digging the engine on this thing. It's great. I always tell the vet guys, they're scared of getting 450s, but for some reason, the Husqvarna is so easy to ride. It doesn't feel like you're on a 450 until you're going up the hill mid-range and it starts to pull. So if you're worried about getting it, getting a little whiskey throttle or getting too loose, this thing doesn't really do that. So really connected, easy to ride. 
Now moving on to the suspension, obviously big changes there for 21. Look it, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I'm not a spring, I'm, I'm not an air fork guy. I'm a spring fork guy. I like a lot of front end feel. That being said, what they did to this air fork, WP, what they did to this air fork makes a big difference for front wheel traction. I get a lot more feel initially in the fork. Yes, it is a little bit soft. We went to 11, 11.1 bar going from 10.7. We will have more of a settings based video here soon, but just today we went a little bit higher in the pressure. I'm 170, Colt is? Uh, 175, 180, depending on how much I eat. <laughs> I'm a big front end steering guy, so a little bit stiffer on the valving, um, I'm sorry, on the air pressure. And then for compression, me and him have a little bit of a different feel. I went a little bit stiffer, he backed it out a little bit and opened up the rebound. I'm more of a slower type of rebound guy. Um, and out back, it was 106. Um, Husqvarna wasn't out with us today. I set the sag at 106. I like that setting. Some of you guys want 105. That's a good, um, that's a good setting as well. But the rear wheel, the, the shock is excellent. Follows the ground well. It soaks up all that small chatter well. But for me, a little bit soft on high speed dampening. I went stiffer. Colt actually went softer. So explain that to the peeps. Yeah, so when I first rode this thing, I was getting kind of a high rear, a little bit stink bug feeling. Um, so we stiffened the forks. That helped quite a bit. Uh, but I still had that high rear feeling, you know, SAG's 106, so it's in the ballpark. Um, so I ended up going a quarter turn uh, out on the high speed, and that dropped the rear end and just settled down the whole shock and the whole rear end of the bike for me. Felt like I was more planted and uh, just overall calmed the bike down. Colt is more of a, if I could say this, ass in low type of guy. I'm more ass in high type of guy, right? So um, the beauty of this bike as I talk about track toughness, and track toughness is how well a bike can adapt to not only the track, but also between several riders. And that is a big reason why we have shootouts, because there's several riders, um, lots of different styles. So Colt and I ride a little bit differently, and uh, we got a happy setting on this 21. So to me, there is a wide window for you guys out there that are wondering, hey, can I dial this bike in? Yes, you can. If you're a serious racer, maybe you want to go to a spring conversion or a spring fork. But for me, man, like I said, WP's done a lot of work to this air fork. It's a lot better. I am happy with it. I wasn't frowning um, right away. Um, anything else you want to add to the suspension? No, I mean, you pretty much covered it all. The only thing I would say is this air fork doesn't feel like an air fork. Um, I know it I've said- It's more of a spring fork feel, right? It does. It's, it, I mean, it works great. There's. As a serious racer, I might think about upgrading the fork, but I mean, for your average guy, or if I was just gonna race locally, wasn't gonna go do any nationals or anything like that, I think it's just fine. It works great. It's very tunable with yeah. the air. Yeah, um, we tuned it with us today, so it was good. Little tidbits about the bike that I like. WP put a little um, plastic knob on the bottom of the fork for the rebound, so it's super easy to get to. You don't gotta crawl under the fork and get a flat blade. You can just turn it just like on the compression. That's cool. You don't have a death seat anymore, okay? Uh, you're not going home with monkey butt. You don't need bag ball now. There's not spikes on the seat. It's nice and smooth, a la Jason Anderson style. Jason has a really smooth seat. Thank you, Husqvarna, for that. My ass thanks you. Same? Yeah, agreed. Uh, in the past, riding a Husky, I'd come home and be like, dude, yeah. what's so Yeah, it tears your butt up, so. Spikes. But, um, gearing for me, I'm a 1349 guy. That's what it comes with. I've tried 1452, other gearing, and for me, I like 1349. It keeps that RPM response, and for me, overall, second and third gear gap is nice. I like that. If you're looking for more power, there's things you can do to this thing. It accepts modifications very well. Unlike a Yamaha where you put more stuff to it, it gets worse, this thing gets better. You can go to a Vortex ignition. You can go to a, an aftermarket muffler. You can do some things to this to make it more powerful and easier to ride. It just keeps getting better and better. So for me, 21, it's a little bit better of a bike. If you're coming off of an older 1920, you will notice a difference. ODI lock-on grips, Magura hydraulic clutch, Hello, Brembo brakes. Anyone else listening? It's hard to beat a Brembo brake. You came off of a Honda. Brembo, how's that? It's, it's incredible. I mean, the rotor's not even super huge, but it works amazing. It's yeah. super controllable. Um, you know, it's got a nice progressive feel. It's not like you're going over the bars when you grab it, but like 
it stops better than any bike on the track. Yeah, Brembo's example. have a lot of control, a lot of power, but not grabby. So I like that. So that pr pretty much wraps it up for a first impression. It's been long enough. It's been, what, 10, 12 minutes? You don't want to hear us talk anymore. So check back racerxonline.com for more information. If you guys have any questions, chris at keyforingtesting.com. I'm here to help. That's right. That's what we do here at RacerX and Keyfering Testing. We help you guys make decisions. And don't forget, subscribe to RacerX Magazine. It's inexpensive. You probably get a free shirt. I don't know what's going on right now, but there's a lot of cool stuff RacerX does. And of course, it's summertime. Get out and ride. All you guys back east, I'm jealous you got better dirt than us. We'll see you on the next one.